Teasers are an important part of big game fishing. Whether you're going for marlin or tuna, even dolphin, wahoo, teasers can make a big difference on how you're going to present your lures and how effectively you're going to fish. I'm going to show you how to rig up some simple teasers that are going to be tough and very effective for almost any species. One of the things I like to do is I like to build teasers with squids. Squid are very important bait in the Northeast, Atlantic, Pacific, just about anywhere you find them. They make a great profile in the water and they can look like almost anything. My two favorite colors are typically natural and pink. And the two sizes I happen to like are a 9 inch and a 6 inch. You can do a lot with these and really the size you choose is going to be based on how big the bait is in the area where you're fishing. However, a lot of times we might just choose the bigger size because we want a little more splash on a calm day and we want a little more action in the water. One of the things I like to do is when I'm building teasers and I'm using the smaller squids, the 6 inch ones, I'll typically put 7 of these on a chain and use a 200 pound fluorocarbon leader. When I'm going with the bigger 9 inch squids, I'm only going to use 5 and we use a 400 pound leader. It's really important that anything we build, we're also going to say it's got to be strong enough that if I put a lure on one end of it, I can still fight a fish without having the teaser getting ripped apart. The key to doing this right is threading all of your tackle onto the leader well before you start crimping anything. So all we're going to use here are a squid, a bead, and a sleeve that we're going to use to lock it in place. So I start by putting my first squid on head first. I add a bead, and this is going to stop the sleeve from sliding up inside the squid. Here's the sleeve, which eventually I'm going to use to lock it in place. Then I put my next squid on, and then I'll add my next bead, my next sleeve, until everything is complete. Once I've threaded everything on, I've got my five squids on, and in between each squid, squid there's a bead, a sleeve, squid, bead, sleeve, squid, all the way through to the end. However, on the last squid, after I put the bead on, I'm not just going to put a sleeve on. I'm going to prepare this end of the squid to put a snap swivel on, on behind it. That way I could attach another lure, another chain of teasers, and either way, i got to always remember to make it strong enough. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take a sleeve, which is actually a little double sleeve, I'm going to put the line through one side of it, I'm going to add a second sleeve, which is going to be very important later on. I'm going to go through a 300 pound mustad snap swivel with a ball bearing on it. This is a very high quality snap swivel. You don't want to use anything cheap here. I'm going to make a very simple loop through the eye of the swivel and then I'm going to make, and I'm going to make the loop again. And what this does is it gives me a double line through the swivel. And what that double line is going to do is going to protect this from getting chafed off. Remember, this lure is going to be in the water for a long time dragging behind the boat. And it's a big risk if you have something behind it. It's going to just break off suddenly and next thing you know, your teaser will be gone or what's behind it will be gone. At this point, I've made this double loop, so I have two loops of line going through the eye of the swivel. I've slid a crimp on. I haven't crimped anything yet. I've slid another crimp on, and I haven't crimped that yet either. So what I'm going to do first is just position this crimp as tight as I can to my loop and give it a quick grab. And later on, we'll crimp this even harder to make sure it's really properly closed. But right now, we're just trying to get the right positioning. Now, this next step is critical. We want to make sure the second sleeve is the right distance from the head of the squid from where it's going to lock up so that when we pull it over the top, when we pull the squid over this, I just want this swivel, just the snap itself, sticking out of the squid. So I already know that for this particular one, if I look at one of the other squids and line it up, it's going to be right about here. So that's my distance. But before I crimp it, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab it with a crimping tool. I'm going to hold it. I'm actually going to spin this and put some twist in it. So there's a little bit of twist in there, and I'm going to hold that twist in. And that's going to keep this a little stiffer and also reduce the chance of the crimp slipping. Grab, and I'm ready to trim this now and position it within the squid. Now that I've crimped everything and it has the proper spacing, I'm just going to pull the first squid over on top of it. And if I did it right, the swivel is right here. So here's the snap and I'll be able to attach that onto another lure, another line of teasers, anything that I want. But this bottom squid is ready to go. Now in terms of the spacing, I like to use about a squid and a half on my spacing before I get to that long one. So I want a full length of a squid and then a little bit more. And actually what I do, because I like to have these be consistent, I actually take one of the other squids and kind of use it as a, as a guide. So I'm just going to use this as a guide on where I want my next crimp to be. 
and I already know that. I just got to slide that crimp into position. And I'm going to grab the, grab the sleeve. I'm going to grab it right here, and I'm going to crimp right at this spot. So I've already built one of these. I'm just going to take advantage of the spacing I had before. I'm just going to line this up, and I'm going to cheat a little bit and just crimp this right here. And all this is going to do is going to stop the bead from sliding down any further, and the squid's going to be perfectly positioned right there. And now I'm going to repeat the process until I get to the end of the squid chain. At this point, I've completed the positioning of my squids. So I've got five squids, the same distance apart, and they're all ready to go. And now I'm actually ready to finish, and if I can push that guy where it belongs, ready to finish the end. And this is a critical connection. Teasers get dragged behind the boat for maybe all day. That's an incredible amount of wear and tear on the end of this connection. And the best way to do it is to add a small, I'm going to actually add a ball bearing swivel, 300 pound. And the reason why I want a swivel is sometimes there's a lot of turbulence behind the boat. And what can happen is your teaser can start spinning. Now, if your teaser spins, you don't want it to spin up the teaser line itself. That, this barrel swivel is going to stop that from happening. And the way I'm going to actually do that is I'm actually going to do the same thing. I'm going to slide my two sleeves on, and then I'm going to put the swivel on. At this point, I've threaded on my swivel. It's a big ball bearing, 300 pound swivel. I've made this double loop so that I know I have extra line through here and it's going to stand up. I've slid one crimp onto position, and I'm going to crimp it. And I'm going to grab the second crimp, but I'm not going to crimp it right away. I'm going to grab, I'm going to spin, and put some twist in. Okay, so I've got the twist in here. And now I'm going to crimp it. And now I've got a really good connection. And I can work on this connection to kind of clean up the end of it so it's not going to snag any debris or snag another line, which is really important. Now here's the most important part. There's a lot of time, effort, and tackle that goes into building one of these. A big mistake that people make is they buy inexpensive squids that don't stand up. This is going to be in the water a very long time. Fish are going to hit it. It's going to take a lot of abuse. The squids that we're using here, these are mold craft squids. Uh, they make the toughest, strongest squids. They're definitely going to stand up longer than anybody else's. They're not very expensive, and they're readily available just about everywhere. So don't buy a cheap squid. Get a good squid. This one happens to have particularly good color. The eyes are painted in. It's got a little fleck to it. And once again, my favorite colors are pink and natural. To learn more about this and other rigging for big game fish, visit our website at anyangling.com.